going to uh, invite the next speaker of the path to IPv6 only in the data center, Henry Alves, Alves de Godoy. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jorge. Thank you, Marcela, for accepting my paper. Uh, I also want to thank the entire program committee. It's very good to be here again in person at a LACNIC event after a few years of remote work. I'm Henri Godoy. And uh, I work at the University of Campinas, and I'm going to present uh, a bit of our work, what we are doing, and the steps uh, we are taking to reach the uh, services in a network that uh, is an, on an IPv6 only uh, network. This is a brief agenda. Just as a guidance, I'm going to discuss the current situation of IPv6 as IPv6 uh, in uh, Onicamp, the challenges on uh, the nomenclature of IPv6 only networks, the steps we are uh, taken to um, phase out IPv4 of a data center, the transition mechanism that we are using specifically to treat the traffic that we are still receiving on IPv4 to our service sites and a final conclusion. Today, the most, the simplest way you can deliver IPv6 is through dual stack as uh, we usually call it. So a provider gives the client two versions. It's uh, quick, it's easy. However, we know that uh, we are duplicating work because we have a configuration that must be done. We uh, have to manage the two protocols. We have the problem mitigation part that generates work and we are duplicating efforts and we need to use lists of access for one and the other protocol. We have firewalls that need to be configured uh, uh, twice. So it's really a work that uh, sometimes ends up being a bit difficult to solve to solve the uh, everyday work because you have to implement the two scenarios at the same time. In addition, there is a possibility that uh, the users may disable IPv6 in that scenario because uh, uh, maybe they heard that they disable uh, IPv6, the computer will work uh, faster and uh, uh, better. So we have the coexistence of the two protocols, but with time, human beings end up getting used to, um, that is, they, they adjust to that, and that's it. However, we want to change things so that we can go to a world that will no longer have a dual stack, but our aim is to be able to work in a data center with a single protocol. And the idea is that with dual stack, we are not solving a problem that we uh, treated quite well this week. That is the depletion of IPv4. That is something that we are not really uh, struggling against with dual stack. We have to go to a world where we can show that today it is possible, and that is my aim in this talk today, to show that I can have, in a, in a data center, I can have services that only execute the current and standard version of the internet, that is the IPv6 protocol. So the uh, State University of Campinas at the school where I work, that is the School of Applied Sciences, UNICAMP, 
is very large. It has many schools, uh, applied sciences, and hospitals. And the work was done at the Applied Sciences School of Limeira. And there, in March 2023, we, um, uh, we enabled the first uh, website, institutional website, executing all the services that uh, that site uh, uh, provide service to. It's a, a very large university. As a matter of fact, it's a city. There are many professionals that are working there with the IPv6 protocol. And we just reach this point of maturity with the IPv6 protocol by training with uh, the uh, with the workers, attending, participating of events, and the only way out we see is training people to work with that protocol. And all along that uh, path, we started studying the transition tools from uh, the NAT64 model, where I did my, I, I gave my first presentation in Lacnoc Rosario 2018. Then we evolved to a scenario where we managed to implement the uh, um, the mechanism 464XLAT in wireless. And during the pandemic, I gave a remote uh, presentation in 2020. And now here, again, I'm presenting a new mechanism for translation, but more focused to the data centers, and that is uh, the CTC. We all also had a, the seat to see that um, we had a tutorial Monday discussing this transition mechanism. So with this um, background, we start to, un to understand and to think of a model of IPv6 only data centers. And this proposal of work uh, that I am presenting may also act as an incentive so that others may also continue with this model. So that we can, they can start activating their services in the IPv6 only protocol version so that that may be used as a model for other schools, universities, institutes, government, uh, and so on. Here we have a chart of uh, a NIC Labs where we tore down the barrier, our AS. The, the 50% uh, um, IPv6 adoption barrier. This is July this year. So clearly, the pandemic changed things. We were, we were growing, and then the pandemic came, and uh, that uh, uh, it uh, dropped suddenly. But again, we recovered the pre-pandemic levels. And now we are moving forward in the implementation of IPv6 protocol at the university. So we have several questions. We need, do we have to remove or to disable or just turn off IPv4? Before we make any comments about that definition, IPv6 only or an IPv6 only network, I found two definitions that we need to understand if we want to continue to talk about this further. One, definition number one, is an IPv6 only network. It's one in which we have the two protocols, but I don't use IPv4 in my network interface. I have, I only have IPv6, but IPv4 was either turned off or removed. The address was removed from the interface. Other definition is in which I don't have any more IPv4 in tunnels or in any other transition mechanism in the internet. There's no IPv4 in management, in transit. So that is another definition. We know that that uh, definition number two is a bit more difficult to say and to obtain, maybe someday. So when I am uh, talk about IPv6 only, I mean uh, 
Um, I'm referring to the first definition where we disable or we remove the IP before address of the network interface just to align in the IPv6 only um, field. So with this, as I work more on uh, with the fi with the end users, the end users are those that generate a, a bit more problems. In Windows, it's easy. In Windows, we enter the network interface and we do not select the IPv4 protocol and we work with IPv6 only. It would be wonderful. But we realize that the interface uh, matches the, uh, it, it continues to have IPv4 there in the interface, so in the loopback, and the uh, our user doesn't have much of an access to it, the uh, Windows interface, only when we use uh, um, this command, but IPv4 is still there, so it didn't disappear completely. I clicked it to remove it, but it's still there. In Linux 2, following the same idea, we continue with IPv4 there in the interface of the local host. The idea of, of removing IPv4 would lead to um, change the entire channel Linux Linux channel, and it wouldn't be a good idea because there are libraries that uh, are shared with IPv4 and IPv6, so it wouldn't be possible. So in this case, we can also remove the address of the interface of the loopback, and we we'll only leave the interface in IPv6. But we are going to generate some problems in some apps that uh, so the binding in the local host to be altered. So here in Jupyter Notebook, it's an app that runs code, it failed because it didn't find the IPv4 address in the interface. It's not ready to be executed in uh, that uh, 2.2.1. Uh, uh, there aren't any options yet of turning IPv4 off in Linux. Who knows? Someday we may have one, but we find in the internet that there are many tutorials showing you how to turn IPv6 off, but strangely enough, there are no tutorials to show you how to turn off IPv4 in many uh, um, OSs. Uh, now, an interesting th thing here is with Docker. At present, Docker operates in IPv6 only. We create a, a daemon.json uh, file. We put uh, IPv6 equal to in a block, and there we think that it's going to work in IPv6 only. So this is in an interface that has only uh, an IPv6 address. However, when we execute uh, the daemon and uh, we execute the interface, IPv4 continues to be there. So we need to go there and remove that configuration of IPv4 manual in the Docker. But in Docker 0, because our idea is just to have IPv6 addresses in the network interface. So we don't have a false Docker IPv4 to disable it in Docker. Docker recently announced that it works totally in IPv6. So I say completely or totally because a machine that only has IPv6, there I managed to register things with our translations in Docker. I can download services just using an IPv6 network. And in the same way, <coughs> this is an excellent example of how these applications can continue, can continue contributing to the growth of the internet. We cannot say the same thing of other services that have delayed the development of the internet, such as GitHub, which does not provide support when we are in an IPv6 network. Now, unfortunately, they still rea didn't realize the urgency of implementing IPv6 in their services. So even if the network interface is disabled, 
when we start a container, then the interface also has IPv4. It seems as if IPv4 is sort of following us. We have to disable this manually in the container. So we do not recommend using the standard network created by the container. There are two options to create it. You can use the bridge mode and the IPv LAN. The bridge mode, this is where you NAT over IPv6. So with that bridge mode, containers will have, will have IPv6. But NAT will have to be done. It might seem strange to do a NAT on IPv6, but that is the behavior that occurs in that mode. Now, what we recommend is to create this with IPv LAN mode. So you don't do NAT on IPv6, but create a network interface that is purely IPv6 so that you can use it. Now, even so, you need to continue doing mapping, port mapping so that these are available, so that this IPv6 can be available to the outer world, and the access to these services. Now, which are the steps that we realize that have to be carried out to migrate to an IPv6-only data center? The first thing is you have to map all the services. So the service, the service that do bind in IPv6 and which do not do in the IPv6 addresses. Now, if the service does not do so, you have to contact the vendor to ask them to do an update or to create a new version because you need to make the service run on IPv6. This is no easy task because many companies, you, with many companies you don't have any contact, some don't even exist anymore. So we have a service that cannot migrate to IPv6 in the data center because we are tied to a connection that still is done on IPv4 and not, for, not on IPv6. There are several devices or legacy systems or medical devices that still run on Windows XP. So we have a, a problem to solve, which is no, not so easy. Now, most of the operation systems now can work with the updated network interface, both Linux and Windows. And even <coughs> some content managers still need IPv4. So there are two things that you can do in cases such as these. You can manually download the, applic the update, or you use NAT64 temporarily to update that option, that's CMS. Now we realized that there was a need to integrate the infrastructure and development devices. These have to go together because there is no point in putting all the data center infrastructure on IPv6 only if the developer in the code places an IPv4 address in the code and this then breaks the entire access to IPv6 only networks. And also, you have to do some adjustments in the firewalls and the monitoring in the flows and logs and all the audits as well as access lists. And th this is so that they can start working and also respond in IPv6 only. <coughs> this is an example that you can then check out. I think this size is reasonable. This shows those applications that still require changes to operate on IPv6 only and so that they can, can be connected in IPv6 only. We have Tomcat where we have to specify that it's going to do bind in an IPv6 address. We have fail to ban, where you have to enable pro, pro, pro 6. We have the bacula backup, where you also need this. You need a line that does bind in IPv6 ports. Then you have proxy Apache and the Docker file where we need to specify 
the quote colon colon otherwise bind will be done on IP4 and in IPv6 and this allows you to make bind in IPv6 only which is the goal we have in this case in other words that only IPv6 addresses are used in these services therefore we also face a challenge we have to deal with those users who are still in IPv4. This is a large public. Therefore, here we have 74% of all visitors who come to our website still are on IPv4. So we cannot uh, rule this out. Therefore, the translation system used by Joel from Nick Mexico, this ITDC, this is a great tool. A presentation was made on Monday in a practical tutorial we had. And if you didn't go to that tutorial on Monday, you missed something out. So this uses a border relay. And then the border relay does the translation of these addresses. We added another component to this network topology. This is a keep alive. And this is an option that adds high availability in the border relay. So it allows the other BR to assume this, so it can have a high availability. And both in, if the topology is set up, then it is easy to grow. It is so simple that from March through August, we went from one website to six websites that had already migrated, already migrated with this topology. And with a data center that is IPv6 only. From now until the end of the year, we are promoting data center services for IPv6 only. So hopefully, in, 19, in 2024, we can start disabling the IP4 network interface in the computers of the IT lab. We have had dual stack for quite a long time now, but the time has come to finally disable these addresses. So we cannot always continue living forever on dual stack. This is a data center topology. We have data centers who, that are working. And the V6 clients are end to end to the data center service. And those who are still in version 4, go through the border relay and then reach the services that are only on IPv6. Here we have a configuration of the mapping table. This is done with Joule. These are one-to-one -one translations using the RFC pre-6052, which is the one that is recommended. And on the other end, we have the Keep Alive configuration, which is the one that balances this with high availability. And then auditing and e-logs are interesting because you don't lose the origin address. What you have to do is to translate the format in hexadecimal to decimal so that all the controls are done in IPv4. You don't need to change any rule in this case. So the first screen is the one that was executed, the setup screen. And the second one is the record in the Apache log. There you can see the difference. And the statistics show me that when something has been translated or 
if the origin was in IPv6. So it is easy to understand how the visits perform. IPv6 is also in the cloud. Today, many cloud providers offer dual stack, but when users migrate to the cloud, they migrate to services in IPv6. So migration to the cloud was not so useful. So many sort of resist using the cloud services in IPv6. Today, students manage to do the labs in dual stack in within a couple of minutes, two or three minutes. It's very easy to do this now. <clears throat> so the trend, the trend is that the cost for using IPv4 <clears throat> will increase more and more. So it will be difficult to do this. The providers, the cloud providers will charge a lot, those who use IPv4. So managing IPv4 will be more complicated, more expensive, so that all the operation on IPv4 will end up becoming far more expensive. Now, specifically speaking about AWS, which is a cloud provider that offers NAT64 as a standard, so far, from what I have heard, this is the only cloud provider where it is also possible to have an IPv6 only instance. So automatically the NAT64 translation can be carried out. So this would be a suggestion so that AWS can do the same as they did with NAT64, namely to adopt SITDC. This will allow us to respond to those clients that are still in IPv4. This is for an instance that only runs in IPv6. To conclude, IPv6 protocol no longer is an option. It is necessary to speed up the transition and to activate IPv6 as a standard uh, by default in all the services. This is focusing data centers, so we are not. It's they are not focusing on the the end user here. We must uh, see the dual stack uh, model. But I'm speaking of the data center, the end user. When we speak of the end user, that's another issue. There's no time to approach it. But it's quite interesting. And in the short term, we don't see a solution as long as the CPEs don't start uh, definitely implementing this. Some of them already implement some transition mechanisms, others don't. So with a single IPv6 protocol in the data center, we facilitate the management of services and we deal with IPv6 only. It's much easier to manage a network with one single protocol. So we need to practice a lot to uh, lose our fear and, to, and uh, to make mistakes, to acquire experiences and learn uh, our lessons so that we can feel safer about what we do in the future. The university uh, does its job by promoting the adoption of IPv6 and in that transition phase, the university has huge responsibilities about that. We need to try to reduce the IPv4 addresses more and more in the network to 
uh, so that it will die little by little. It, will, it won't uh, have a sudden death. So from now on, we expect it to live uh, a shorter time. So the idea is to move some IPv4 addresses that uh, we believe are necessary. We want them to be used for apps that uh, either do have no uh, app um, and no updates. So this is the way we can further reduce IPv6 addresses, the IPv4, IPv4 to move them toward IPv6. Here I leave you some uh, references. So you can have access to them. And uh, I thank you for your patience. So, and may you have a nice afternoon. I leave you my contact information, and if you have any doubts, well, either in person or you can also write to me, and I can answer here. You have my contact information. I'll be uh, all week, so we can continue to discuss things uh, in the corridors. It's a great pleasure to be able to collaborate in such an important time, the time of transition. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Henry.